If I want a domain name, I can get those online, pay a little money, uh, that's not a problem. However, if I want an IPv4 address, those are scarce. And usually getting one of those, uh, particularly in most places, involves talking to an actual human being. So I actually need an IP address uh, to set up a new machine. And the person I would talk to at UB uh, is Ken Smith, uh, manager of computer operations. Uh, very nice guy, very competent guy. Uh, great BSD hacker. Um, so come on in, let's come into Ken's office. It's nice and dark and peaceful in here. All right, so um, Ken, I need an IP address. Okay. How many of those do we have? A couple hundred. A couple hundred. So those are ones that CSE manages. Right. Okay. So a lot of them aren't in use. Okay. So. How many? Like, how many do you think Buffalo has floating around? Like, we have um, a class B. We have at least one class B prefix, right? Right. And there are several other that aren't full class B. Right. So with you know, variable length subnet masks running around all over the place, we've got several that are smaller than the class B. Right. How many prefixes does UB advertise? It's like seven, I think? Seven or eight, yeah. Okay. So, so UB's IP addresses, like many other institutions, I mean, UB started out with a Class B network, right. which provided us with like you know, 65,000 hosts. And then right. over time, we've added IP addresses to that by um, you know, uh, acquiring other subnets right, that are smaller than the Class B. So now we have this sort of patchwork of you know, I think 128.205 is one of them. I think 8.35 is something that we use on right. UB Secure and stuff like that. So if you have on-campus IP addresses, you might see a mixture of the 128.205 ones that to me really say UB and then other ones that are in other categories. Right. All right. So, um, so pick an address form. Okay. Allocate me an IP address. It's going to take a couple minutes. So. Okay. Ken is also probably the person that you might talk to if you wanted a domain name. How are these managed? I mean, what are you doing? Okay. Um, we do keep just a flat file that records everything. Um, okay. So since we have several subnets and we've been dividing up them up based on what types of machines go on them. Mm -hmm. So for example, we've got one subnet that's mostly secured servers. Okay. Whereas we've also got subnets where we try to turn loose the researchers okay. so that they can do whatever they need to do. So there are different security policies that we're applying to different subnets. Right. So all of the subnets are separated from the rest of the world by firewalls. Right. Um, so for the researchers, I try very hard to just give them what they need. Yeah. Um, there have been times when I overly firewall by mistake. Ken is pretty good um, at giving researchers what they need. Yeah. I appreciate so, it. So um, I have made a couple of mistakes with the firewalling that Jeff pointed out. No, um, okay. I hadn't intended for them to be quite that heavily firewalled. But in general, researchers, they're so focused on their task at hand mm -hmm. that they will ignore a whole bunch of things that make their machines vulnerable and stuff like that. Yeah. So on request, we'll open up the firewalling to whatever level the researchers want, but by default, mm -hmm. it's heavily firewalled, sometimes to the point that the only way you can get to the machines is from on campus. Gotcha. And that way, you know, if they want to be kind of loosey with what they're doing, sometimes they're actually, you know, researching security issues. Yeah. Um, they're not open to the rest of the world. Gotcha. And that that's our default, and we'll just open things up as needed yeah. um, by request. Give me one of the IP addresses that has no rules. Um, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I'll have to open that up for you. Um, yeah, this one probably is fine. What was the last name that you got? Last name? Yeah, or one of the ones that's in use now. Uh, I think 43. I think we have the 43.182 group. 
Oh, here it goes. They're used for phone labs. So it's okay. 43, 180, 181, 182. That block I've exhausted, though. I think there were eight in there. Okay. Um, um, you want one more? Sure. Okay. So the last one that we allocated for you was 43.189. Okay. And 43.190 hasn't been used yet. So Great. I'll give you that. Perfect. Okay. okay, thank you very much. So now... Same naming scheme, PhoneLab VM10? Yeah, sure. Okay. So now, essentially, I had a block of IP addresses that I was using. I had, I guess, eight of them? Eighty three? Nine. You had ten. I had ten. So I've used those for things. One of them is used for the website for this class. And so now, Ken has given me number one. So thank so you very much, sir. You're very welcome.